Okay, this then leads into the issue of tracking. If, say, I take uh, 100 students who are now five years old and they're all coming into my school system and I'm Plato, uh, what do I do with them? Do I give them all of the same education? Do they all have the same curriculum? Do I teach them all the, uh, the same uh, pedagogical techniques? Or do I need to start breaking the students up into different groups with different curricula, uh, going off in different directions, uh, uh, different pedagogical techniques, right, and so forth. And Plato comes down very strongly on the side of the latter. What we need to do because of this issue of human nature is uh, uh, make sure that we are tailoring the education to the kind of student who, uh, who is important, uh, that, we're, that we're dealing with here, rather. And in part, it's a matter of a wise use of uh, educational resources that are scarce. He says, for example, there are lots and lots of people who, no matter what, are never going to get calculus. Obviously, this is before calculus, uh, but I'm going to use it as my example anyway. You're never going to get calculus through to these people here. They're never going to understand higher order metaphysics, so why bother wasting time on this absurd presupposition that all students can learn everything. Instead, we should recognize that they're never going to get it, and so uh, we just take that off the curriculum for them. On the other hand, we do know that there are lots of students who can get to calculus fairly quickly. They can get to philosophy fairly quickly. Uh, we should not be sticking those students in a class with a bunch of people who are never going to get it and teach everybody the same curriculum. All that means is that these students are going to be retarded in their development. They're going to be uh, slowed down. They're going to waste a whole lot of time. They're going to get a bad edu attitude about education. They will start tuning out, and all their potential will be will be wasted. So, what we should then do is have different curricular curricula rather for different kinds of students here. Now, I want to make a politics connection. In uh, the case of uh, Plato's political philosophy, he has what uh, I think of as an organic conception of what society should do. And uh, crudely put, uh, says if we look at at a society uh, and we're trying to organize the polity, uh, what needs to be done in order for a society to function uh, well and efficiently. And as it happens, uh, Plato identifies three functions. He says, obviously, one of the things that has to happen is there are all kinds of material goods that need to be manufactured. We need people to grow the food. We need people to make our clothes. We need people to, uh, to, uh, to build our houses. We need people to sweep the streets, right, and so forth. So there's all kinds of manual labor, uh, including uh, various kinds of crafts that need to be, to be done. So that's one category, the manual labor or, or the physical work, essentially, that needs to be done. We also need people to, uh, to perform police functions and military functions. After all, there are going to be lots of people in our society who aren't going to, break, uh, to obey the rules. They're going to break the rules. There are going to be fights. There are going to be thefts. There are going to be murders and so forth. So we need certain kinds of people to, uh, to perform police functions to keep the peace and to catch the bad guys and so forth. And we also need, uh, in that same sort of uh, category, people who are able to defend us against, say, the city down the road road or the people across the sea who every once in a while are going to come and attack us and try to take us over. So we do need uh, military oriented people. But Plato uh, says if you look at people who are doing police functions and people who are doing military functions, it's essentially right, the same sorts, uh, sorts of things. These are more martially oriented uh, types of people. Uh, and then finally, of course, we're going to need leadership. We need people to make the laws. Hopefully they will make wise laws. They will make just laws. People who can see the big picture, who can think long range and, and so forth. All right, so uh, we have then three social functions that need to be uh, performed in a well-ordered society. And so I'll write those down here. We have uh, social functions. Right. We need people to do various sorts of physical work people to be the farmers, the carters to get the produce to market, the carpenters, and so forth. We need people to do the more uh, martial types of uh, operations, the police and uh, people who are going to be soldiers uh, in the military and so forth. And then we need uh, people who are going to perform various sorts of leadership roles, people who will uh, be our, our, uh, our judges in the courts, uh, deciding foreign policy and domestic policy as, as well. All right, now if we lay it out this way, then uh, Plato says this is a beautiful thing. Right? This is an issue of politics. This is an issue of human nature. And 
reality is working in threes, there's a perfect fit here. It makes sense then to say people who are by nature uh, more appetitive, they're more physically oriented people, uh, they're satisfied with uh, uh, you know, spending time with their, their families, uh, going to jobs, standing behind an ox all day. Uh, while they're plowing the fields, bringing in the harvest, right, and so forth, having uh, some wine at the end of the day while they relax. Uh, it makes sense that people who are dominated by their appetites, that they will be satisfied and fulfilled and otherwise most suited for being farmers, being carters, being carpenters, right, and so forth. Those things involve some spirit and some reason, but we're not going to overly tax people by, by uh, training them to be farmers and so forth. The kind of people uh, who are, uh, are necessary for being police and soldiers, well, these are the kind of people uh, you know, who are very spirited. They're very interested in honor and glory and courage. And they want to get out and see the world. Uh, they would be bored to death uh, just standing behind a plow all day. But as it happens, there is a social function that we can uh, very happily assign to them. They're the kinds of people who will make the, uh, the best uh, uh, martial uh, representatives of our society and perform those functions as well. Now, uh, uh, people who are spirited, if they're going to be in these roles here, they have to have a more developed uh, reason. The police have to have a, a decent sense of justice. Soldiers, we want them to have a sense of strategy, and all of those require uh, more development of reason than, say, being a farmer or, or a carter. Uh, uh, and, of course, they, these people also have their appetites, but they're the center of their being really is, is here, and these kinds of functions can, uh, can, uh, can uh, satisfy them and our social needs as well. Then finally, what we want in our leaders is people who are highly intelligent, highly moral, and who are developed uh, as extremely as possible in those cases so that we can have the wisest policies put in place. And because we're giving these people a significant amount of power, they have the, the rational character uh, as well. They understand the importance of justice and they knew, really know what justice is. So to some extent, they can be trusted with that power. Now, again, they are uh, 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 going to have some appetites, but they're not going to be people who are dominated by their appetites. They're not going to let their appetites get the better of their reason. They are people who are going to be spirited, but again, if there's a conflict between uh, their passions and their reason, because their reason dominates, they're not going to give in to any sort of short-run passion. Uh, instead, they will do the right thing in the, in the, wrong, in the long run.